In 1999, Busch Gardens Tampa would open the southeast largest and tallest Jolin wooden coaster. Its story would be rough and rocky. The park would have a mountain of troubles after its construction to try and iron out. Sadly, it ended up closed and abandoned in the middle of the park before it was reborn as a new kind of beast. The latest is Gwazi, a new woody built at Busch Gardens Tampa Bay in 1999. Its two 3,400-foot intertwined tracks cross six times. The train pulled into the Guazi station for the last time tonight. Guazi, 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 Guazi. What's that? The wait is over. Something's coming. Busch Gardens Tampa began with a brewery, once producing hundreds of thousands of barrels of beer per year. The $37 million facility gave tours of its beer creation building from the day the park opened on June 1, 1959, all the way up to the day it closed in late 1995. By shutting down the brewery, the company was expected to save around $33 million a year and reclaim around 17 acres of land in the center of the park. The company stated that once cleared, the land may become used for an expansion of the theme park, but they currently had no immediate plans for the site. One theory stated that it will be turned into a hotel. When you say but, you've said a lot of things nobody else can say. Anheuser-Busch, the world's largest brewer, made the decision to close the Tampa Brewery as it was one of the oldest, smallest, and most expensive breweries within the company to operate. It produced its final 12-ounce Bud and O'Doul's after 36 years in mid-December 1995. That extra money saved would be used to expand the company's theme parks. The park was already in the process of opening another expansion for 1996, called Egypt, and had no plans to slow down. As for the space of the now extinct brewery, Park General Manager Joe Fincher stated that he intended to start a task force right away to evaluate prospective uses for the reclaimed land. The brewery sat empty with much of what was once stood inside sold, as the park prepared to open the world's largest inverted roller coaster in 1996. It wouldn't be until August 1997 that the abandoned building in the center of the theme park would be demolished. When you say Budweiser, you've said it all. Rumors of what would be coming to the park began to circulate. In June 1998, it was announced that a major multi-phase expansion was coming. Busch Gardens envisioned building multiple 1,000 plus room themed hotels that would turn the theme park into a resort to rival Disney. This new hotel would be comparable to the new 1,900 room Coronado Springs near Animal Kingdom. The 13-year regional development plan hoped to have thousands of rooms by the year 2010. It also included a tease of information on a new $10 million ride for 1999. The undetailed major ride would be joined by a new themed area taking over around three-fourths of the old brewery site. They hoped these investments would push the current 4.7 million yearly attendance to over 6.5 million by 2010. The park had grown over 57% during the previous five years. The addition of Kumba and Montu had worked. 1998 saw the addition of Akbar's Adventure Tours, but a different kind of beast was coming. Hello, my tourist friends. I am Akbar. On July 16, 1998, Busch Gardens Tampa announced they would be home to not one, but two dueling wooden roller coasters. 
Guazi. Using eight acres of the former brewery site, the new coaster would be named after an African legend of a half lion, half tiger that is forever struggling with itself. The name was chosen with assistance from the Washington University in the company's home of St. Louis. The fabled tale of the Guazi, part lion and part tiger, was actually made up for the attraction and was not based on anything from real African legend. The southeast's largest and fastest double wooden coaster had two tracks, Lion or Tiger, featuring different paths that would interact with each other six times during its run. While a small selection of wooden coasters had come and gone over the decades in Florida, it would be only the second operating wooden coasters in the state at the time, with the other being the Starliner. Starliner had operated for over 40 years successfully and should have been around for much longer. Wooden coasters had seen somewhat of a popularity boost, and Busch Gardens Tampa were joining the wooden coaster renaissance. Anheuser-Busch had some experience, though short, with Florida wooden coasters at Boardwalk and Baseball until they closed the park in 1990. Wooden coasters would cost a lot less upfront than the newer steel coasters, but in the long run would cost much more to maintain. Many people often state that Florida is not good for wooden coasters, but the engineers for Guazi said they were not concerned that they could be erecting a 1 million board food feast for the state's termites. Guazi would use 2x12 planks, stacked high, which were then bent and twisted into shape with clamps. The attraction required 2 million bolts and millions of nails. The wood used was made of pressure-treated southern pine from a South Carolina tree farm and baked in a kiln for 45 days with bug repellent, dry rot repellent, and a fire retardant. The structure could withstand hurricane winds of up to 100 miles per hour without fail. The ride would be able to operate with gusts up to 40 miles per hour. Ten engineers would be dedicated to checking every inch of the ride daily for safety and checking for loose bolts from vibrations. This was minimized as the bolts on the attraction were specialized locking bolts that would not be affected when the lumber would shrink in the hot Florida sun. These bolts provided less chance that the nuts and bolts would vibrate loose. It wasn't the climate that made it difficult to open wooden coasters in the state of Florida. Though some see it as old-fashioned, a wooden coaster was chosen to offer something different than the other Central Florida theme parks. The vice president of planning and design for the park set out on a trip visiting 17 theme parks with his family to try different selections of coasters. Park executives flew out in a private jet to try the top five wooden coasters found and settled on Wildcat at Hershey Park as the winner. Its builder, Great Coasters International, were contacted to create a twist on the racing coasters of old. GCI, created by Michael Broodley and his partner Claire Hayne, the company, now five years old, had only created two coasters at the time, one of which was Wildcat. Between them, however, they had tons of experience. Guazi would be their biggest project by far. The ride was designed by Broodley, who started out in the industry while working summer jobs for the Philadelphia Toboggan Company. It was Hain who got the construction done. To get his start in the industry, he had learned carpentry skills to help him fix houses for his mother's landlord in Pennsylvania. He signed up as a day laborer to erect the Phoenix, an old wooden coaster that was moved and rebuilt near his home at Knobles. Not long after, he would be flying around the world building coasters for Custom Coasters International, which is where both partners met as Broodley was now designing coasters for them. It was here they decided to form their own company in 1994. After 70 tractor trailers dropped off the lumber, construction began in July 1998, and by May 1999, it was ready for test runs. The first runs were taken by water dummies. Not long after, it was the ride constructors who were taking their rides, riding multiple times to try and bang out all of the bumps and jiggles as they went. Some early riders to ride the original coasters included Zulu warriors from South Africa, children from Orlando Boys and Girls Club, and clowns from the Ringling Brothers Circus. 
the Zulu warriors performed an authentic tribal dance at the grand opening for the attraction. The tribesmen were from the town of Hoek in South Africa and used native methods and materials to craft the log frames and thatch roofs for the ride's huts and station area. The station area was themed to an African village with two unique environments. Within the Gwazi Lion territory, hot colors and lava rocks comprised an African desert atmosphere, while the Gwazi Tiger side had lush landscapes and the cool streams of Asia. It also included Michael Buffer to celebrate the ride's opening. Introducing first in the yellow corner, we have the powerful Gwazi Lion. And his opponent in the blue corner, the quick and calculating Gwazi Tiger. Uh, let's get her ready to rumble! Unlike Kumba and Montu, Bush wanted Gwazi to be a ride for the family, with a lower 48-inch height requirement. The ride was ready to go for its June 17, 1999 preview event when guests could finally feel the roar of Gwazi. Newspapers reported that the track was redesigned multiple times during its 12-month-long construction of the 2 million pieces required for the attraction. Gwazi was designed to create two coasters that twisted into a mess of wood support that left riders confused and disorientated when they got off asking where was I and what just happened. When the blue tiger side and the yellow lion trains left the station, they traveled on a slightly different path, one left and one right into the 90 foot tall lift hills. Each track had 3,508 feet and a 90 foot drop reaching a top speed of 51 miles per hour. At points they would run parallel to the opposing track and each would head through the lift hill of the other. Throughout the layout, each dueling train could come within 6 feet of the other as it passed through bank turns and hills on the 2 minute 20 second experience, reaching 3.5 Gs in its tighter curves. The coasters were a work of art, with tons of charm, intertwining with each other and opening day reports were positive. For GCI's third ever project, it was certainly a beast that many, many people were excited to ride. Reports stated that the airtime was great and it took their breath away. Some called it the best wooden coasters ever made, and others reported it was fast while smooth. Really, the only opening day complaints coming in were about the trains. Gwazi would use Philadelphia Toboggan Company trains that were quite small and tight. PTC had been a staple for wooden roller coasters for decades. Recently, the PTC trains were modified at GCI's request a few years earlier to include padded headrests, but they remained very much the normal wooden coaster train you had seen for years. At the time, GCI was in the process of designing their now world-renowned Millennium Flyer trains. These new trains could articulate the track to create a much smoother experience than one long train like the PTC styles. The same year as Gwazi opened, Six Flags would open the GCI wooden roller coaster Raw at Discovery Kingdom. They opted to take a risk and use GCI's brand new Millennium Flyer trains rather than the proven PTC trains. They, however, required the option for the coaster to be able to be retrofitted with PTC trains if the new GCI trains were not performing at satisfactory levels. Bush decided not to take the risk when given the option and went with the classic PTC train. Gwazi was a ride that never slowed down from start to finish, flying through the track, interacting with each other, creating something unique. If you rode it in the summer or on a rainy day, it really felt like you were on a wild adventure and could fly off the track at any moment. While said to be a family coaster, it was anything but, offering intense thrills, high lateral forces, and airtime that could feel incredibly intense. The dueling element offered something new and would be the biggest, baddest wooden roller coaster in Florida. Just when you think you've seen everything wood coasters have to offer, here's a new twist. Flybys, Wazi's dueling two-track coasters, the Lion and the Tiger, deliver a double dose of unrivaled excitement as both trains engage in six harrowing flyby encounters. The first five months of 1999 have been slower for the park than the previous year, but Guazi gave it the boost needed to continue to increase attendance year after year. Shortly after opening, the dispatches on the ride were changed to no longer purposely dual. The park had received complaints about long lines and dispatch times, 
First, the seatbelts had to be checked before then the lap bars were lowered and had to be checked again for both trains. It sometimes took many minutes for both trains to depart together, often leaving one sat ready to go, waiting for the other. After the change, you could be lucky and experience the dueling element only if the timing was right. After a few years, complaints began to start that the ride was becoming rougher and rougher, with an intense rattle throughout. While maintenance tried to continue to fix the issues, the lines to ride continued to get shorter and shorter, with guests even complaining of headaches after experiencing the attraction. Bush Gardens began to look for ways to improve the experience. The lion side was retracked in 2009, and the tiger in 2010. The overhaul to improve the attraction was complete in 2011 when Busch Gardens replaced the original PTC trains with four GCI Millennium Flyer trains. These exact ones that they had decided against at the opening of the ride 12 years earlier. The new trains helped improve the experience, but the coaster still remained difficult to maintain and its reputation of being rough did not go away. With declining ridership at the end of the 2012 season, the recently retracked Tiger side of the Jolin roller coaster closed forever. One of the Tiger trains were used on the Lion side, proving that once and for all, the Lion side had won the Battle of the Beasts. An access ramp was built in the station over the former track, leaving no doubt it would ever return. Rumors began right away of Guazi's imminent closure. Two years later, that confirmation came. In December 2014, Busch Gardens Tampa confirmed that Guazi's Lion Track would officially close due to guest feedback, low ridership, and operating costs. It's time to say goodbye to a piece of Bush Gardens history. The train pulled into the Guazi station for the last time tonight. Many people took advantage of the beautiful weather to take one last ride on Guazi. After 15 years of operation, the mythical half tiger, half lion would be no more. Guests regularly attribute the coaster to hurting their back, rattling their teeth, and many had developed a dislike of the wooden roller coaster. It's a wild ride. It throws you and tosses you every which way. I mean, up and down, sideways. It's a, it might be a bumpy ride, but it's a thrill. It's a, you know, one of those uh, jerkers, you know? I've said it before, but my favorite coasters are those wooden, slightly rough rides full of charm coasters that gave you something different every time you jumped on. Busch Gardens had created the legend of the Guazi, and the dueling wooden coaster in Tampa would 100% become a legend of itself. Full of mystery, uniqueness, and stories of its rough and intense rides in its quite short years of operation. Its final ride was held on February 1st, 2015, closing indefinitely. It's been part of our fabric since 1999. You know, I think it's, it's a little sad for everybody. After the closure, the attraction stood standing but not operating in the middle of the park. The Millennium Flyer trains that were introduced in 2011 were repurposed at Busch Gardens Williamsburg with Invader. Wood planks from the ride were used for shops and buildings throughout Busch Gardens and SeaWorld. Events came and went at the nearby Guazi Plaza as the attraction stood abandoned nearby. The ride station was used again for the haunted house unearthed at Howlow Scream from 2015. Walking under and through the old queue created an incredibly eerie experience as the wooden coaster loomed overhead. For years, Guazi sat within the park abandoned, with no news on what would come. Guazi remained silent, its future unknown. Would it be destroyed? Rumors circulated on what would replace the once iconic ride. Another roller coaster, perhaps, most likely steel, or even a more permanent outdoor stage. Maybe Bush would finally get that hotel they've been trying for for decades. The park continued to state that Bush Gardens was looking at possible attractions to replace it. There was, however, one rumor that people hoped to be true, one which many doubted would ever come to fruition.
In 1999, it was said that the original Guazi was a competitive response to the upcoming Islands of Adventure, with both parks opening dueling roller coasters in the same year. While neither of those rides still exist today, it is kinda poetic that through some troubling circumstances, both parks would open two of the best roller coasters in the world once again, less than a year apart from each other, creating a brand new battle. A battle of crocodile and dinosaur. That hope that many would have would come true. At the announcement of Tigris in September 2018, it was announced that coming in 2020, it was time to hold on to your seats. A new beast was coming. Major plans were in the work for Guazi. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Extinct. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to join the expedition. If you would, follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates on upcoming episodes. And a special thank you to our Patreons for supporting the channel. We will see you very soon.